Good day to all of you, my brothers and sisters. Muli, narito tayo sa live stream ng SCB. At ang topic po natin ngayon ay Honoring God. Honoring God. Revelation chapter 4 describes a remarkable scene in heaven. So, pag binasa ho natin chapter 4 ng Revelation, ay dito makikita natin yung isang senaryo na kung saan ay sa kalangitan. Ano po? At dito makikita natin yung 24 elders are gathered together around the throne room of God. What are they doing is they worshiping God and laying their crowns down before Him. At ano sinasabi nila? Revelation chapter 4 verse 10 to 11. Ano sinasabi? You are worthy. You are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. Revelation 4, 10 to 11. Chapter 4, verse 10 to 11. So makita natin dito yung 24 elders na kung saan ay sumasamba sa Diyos, lumuluhod sa harapan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo, at sila ay nagdideklara ng karapat dapat po kayo Panginoon namin Diyos. See? Sinasamba nila ng ating Panginoon. Karapat dapat siyang tumanggap ng parangal, papuri at kapangyarihan dahil kayo ay lumikha ng langit ng lahat ng bagay at ginawa ninyo ang mga ito ayon sa inyong kagustuhan. See? Sumasamba sila. Nagbibigay luwalhati sila sa Diyos. Okay. The Bible says that one day, isang araw, lahat ng tao ay luluhod sa ating Panginoon. And no matter how powerful someone might be, or he think he is, ano, he, we will lay all our crowns at God's feet because there is only one king in heaven that he alone is worthy of all glory and all praises. He is worthy. That is our God whom we serve. Sang araw mangyayari yun. Ano ba yung honor? To honor is to hold in high respect, reverence, and distinction. Ulitin ko. To honor is to hold in high respect, reverence, and distinction. We honor certain people. Why? Because they have a perceived value and because of their position. Meron ho mga biblical instruction na kung saan tayo ay tinuturuan para i-honor natin ang mga taong ito. Una, we are to honor our parents. Deuteronomy chapter 5 verse 16 says, Honor your father and your mother just as the Lord your God has commanded you so that your day may be prolonged and that it may go well for you on that land which the Lord your God is giving you. So, makita natin dito, mga kapatid, uh, kinakailangan natin i-honor ang ating parents dahil, ano sabi? So that your days may be prolonged and that it may go well for you on the land which the Lord God is giving you. Ito pala yung may pangako. Ano? Kapag in-honor natin ating mga magulang, eh, may pangako ang Diyos. May pasubali ang Diyos para sa atin. But it is sad to say these days, marami na hong mga uh, kabataan ayaw i-honor yung matatanda, ayaw i-honor yung mga uh, nanay at tatay nila. Lalo na, nung ginawa yung batas, yung ginaya ng isang tao dyan, yung batas sa USA, na binigyan ng karapatan ang mga bata, na ipagtanggol ang kanilang sarili kapag sila ay dinisiplina ng kanilang mga magulang. Diba? Mapapansin natin ngayon, mga lapastangan ng mga anak sa kanilang mga magulang. Okay? So, the Bible tells us that we 
are to honor our parents. Secondly, encourages us to honor the elderly. Leviticus 19.32 says, You shall stand up in the presence of the gray-headed and honor elders, and you shall fear your God. I am the Lord. Yan ang sabi ng Diyos sa kanila. Leviticus 19 verse 33. Kinakailangan tayong tumayo sa presensya ng mga gray-headed. Ibig sabihin ay yung mga grays ng mga buhok na. May mga uban na. Ano pa? And honor elders. I-honor natin yung mga elders. And you shall fear your God. At ating pong kakatakutan ng Diyos. Banal na pagkatakot sa Diyos. Ano pa? Admonishes us to honor those who are in authority. The Word of God is admonishing us. 1 Peter 2.9 But you are chosen generation. Ah, uh, sorry po. 1 Peter 2.13 Submit yourselves to the Lord's sake to every human institution whether to a king as the one in authority. See? Sa Romans din, sinabi yan. Naigalang natin ang mga nasa otoridad. So, submit ourselves for the Lord's sake. At ito ay ilan lamang sa mga maraming mga bagay na sinasabi ng Biblia na kung saan ay makikita natin na tinuturo sa atin ang pag-honor. But there are dozens of Bible verses that tell us to honor God. Not only do they instruct us to honor Him, but they also show us how to do so. Who are they? Sino sila? That honors God. Who are they that honors God? Are the hidden honors God? Ang mga makasalanan bang tao? Niluluwalhati ang Diyos? Eh sino ang luluwalhati sa Diyos? 1 Peter 2.9 But you are a chosen generation or chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession so that you may proclaim the excellencies of Him who has called you out of darkness into His marvelous light. Sino daw? Sino daw yung proclaim ng excellencies ng Dios na siyang tumawag sa atin out of darkness into His marvelous light. Who are they? We. Tayo na mga tumanggap sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo at namuhay na merong kabanalan sa Kanya. Namuhay ayon sa kaliwanagan na tinuturo ng Diyos. Namu- namumuhay ayon sa kabanalan ng ating Panginoon. At tinawag niya tayong chosen people. Ano pa? A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of God's possession. Pag-aari tayo ng Diyos. Diba? Malachi chapter 2 verse 5 to 7 says, May covenant with Him was one of life and peace, and I gave them to Him as an object of reverence. So He revered me and was in awe of my name. True instruction was in His mouth and injustice was not found in His lips. He walked with me in peace and justice and he turned many backs from wrongdoing for the lips of the priest should maintain knowledge and people should seek instruction from his mouth for he is a messenger of the Lord of armies. See? Sino kausap niya dito? Sino sinasabi niya dito? Ang mga Levita. Si Levi. Lahi ni Levi. Ano sabi? Pinangakos ng Diyos sa kanila ang buhay at kapayapaan kung igagalang lamang niya, nila ang Diyos. ba? Ang mga lingkod ng Diyos ang siyang dapat gumalang sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Kung ikaw ay lingkod ng Diyos, you have to honor God. We have to honor God. Number one, who are they that honors God? They serve God with reverence. Verse 5, Malachi chapter 2. My covenant with him was one of life and peace, and I gave them to him as an object of reverence. 
So he remembered me and was in awe of my name. Ba? Sa Tagalog, sa aking kasunduan kay Levi, pinangako ko sa kanya ang buhay at kapayapaan. Basta igalang lamang niya ako at iyan nga ang kanyang ginawa. Ginalang niya. Number two, True instruction is found in them. Kung ikaw ay mananampalataya ng ating Panginoon, kung ikaw ay tinawag na royal priesthood, true instruction is found in you. Verse 6, true, true instruction was in, the mouth, in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. He walked with me in peace and justice and he turned many backs from wrongdoings. So ano yung naka-highlights dyan? True instruction was in his mouth and injustice was not found on his lips. So, if you are a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a pag-aari ng Diyos, God's possession, then true instruction is found in you. Three, ano ang ginagawa? na mga tao na nagbibigay ng paggalang sa Diyos. Number three, there is no hindrance as they minister to God. Walang humahadlang, walang hadlang sa kanilang paglilingkod sa ating Panginoong Diyos. Hinighlight ko po dyan yung He walk with me in peace and justice. He walk with me in peace and justice. See? Chapter, verse 6 po yun. Sa verse 6. Number 4. They cause many to change their mind and walk toward their destiny. Kaya napaparangalan nila ang Diyos sapagkat sila yung dahilan kung bakit nababago ang mga kaisipan ng mga tao at sila ay lumalakad tungo sa destiny na inilagay sa kanila. Verse 6 pa rin. Hinighlight ko po dyan yung he turned many back from wrongdoings. If you are a royal priesthood, God's possession, then, ito ang gagawin mo para mabigyan mo ng kalbalatian ng Diyos. They cause many to change their mind and walk toward their destiny. Number five, they are the source of spiritual nourishment to many. Kung ikaw ay tinawag ng Diyos at lingkod ng Diyos, you are the source of spiritual nourishment para sa marami. Verse 7, For the lips of a priest should maintain knowledge and people should seek instruction from his mouth. For he is the messenger of the Lord of armies. If you are called a royal priesthood, then, you are a messenger of the Lord of the armies. So, people may come to you because you are the source of spiritual nourishment for them. Hindi yung ikaw yung dahilan para bumagsak yung pananampalataya ng iba. Alam mo ninyo, nakakalungkot. Kung pinangangalandakan mong ikaw ay mananampalataya sa ating Panginoong Heso Kristo pero hindi makita sa iyo na ipinamumuhay mo ang pagiging anak ng Diyos. Nakakalungkot po yun. Wala kang pakinabang sa ikaw, ikalalago ng iba. Dapat, katalis ka sa pagbabago, katalis ka sa paglago ng ibang tao sapagkat hihingan ka nila ng payo. Spiritual nourishment to them. Hebrews 5, 7 to 10. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, He offered up prayers and petitions with loud cries and tears to the one who could save Him from death. And He was heard because of His fervent submiss irreverent submission. Although He was a son, He learned obedience from what He suffered. And once made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey Him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. 
si pinakita da, dito ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo na kung saan ay siya yung katalis ng buhay. Ano po? He became the source of eternal salvation. That's why He became the high priest in the order of Melchizedek. But God has called us to be a royal priesthood also because Jesus is our high priest. So if Jesus is the source of eternal salvation for all that obey Him, so we as the royal priesthood should also the spiritual source ng ibang tao na mailid natin sila towards salvation. Amen. Dapat yung mangyari sa atin. Who are the priests that dishonor God? Sino-sino sila? We are all called by God. A royal priesthood. So you are a priest. So, who are the priests that dishonor God? Those who turn away from the truth. Yeah. Yung binabaluktot ang katotohanan. Sino pa? Those who destroyed many because of their teaching. Nasira ang pananampalataya ng iba dahil sa maling turo nila. Those who have distorted the priesthood. Those who have distorted the priesthood. Di ba? Ang lahi ng priesthood. Kapag ikaw ay priest, so kinakailangan, hindi ma-distort yun o oh, hindi uh, masira yung pagiging priest mo. Those who show partiality in their teaching. They show partiality in their teaching. Kapag ang kaharap niya ay isang taong kilala sa lipunan, hindi niya masabing nagpakasalanan siya. Pero kung ang kaharap niya ay isang tao na kung saan hindi naman kilala sa lipunan at medyo uh, medyo mababa ang ang katayuan niya sa buhay ay kaya niya sabihin makasalanan. Di ba? Ganun yun eh. Partiality in teaching. Merong kinikilingan. Kung baga sa ano, ay merong iniiwasan. So they are the priest that is honor God. Talala ko tuloy yung sinabi ni Propeta Nathan kay David. Sabi niya, marapat ba na ang isang tao ay kunin yung nag-iisang kambing na ginagatasan niya? Sabi ni David, hindi. Sabi niya, eh ano ang dapat gawin sa taong kumuha ng kambing na ito? Ang sabi niya, dapat siyang mamatay. O anong sabi ng propeta sa kanya? Ikaw yun. Si ang tapang, ano? Lakas. Tapang kaharap niya, hari. So, hindi siya priest that is honor God. He is the priest that gives honor to God. Okay? How did they dishonor God? Paano nga ba natin dinidishonor ang Diyos? Hindi ginagalang ang Diyos. Letter A. The people dishonor God by not acknowledging the love of God for them. Malakay 1, verse 2 to 3. I love, I have loved you, says the Lord. But you say, how you, how have you loved us? Was Esau not Jacob's brother, declares the Lord. Yet I have loved Jacob, but I have hated Esau. And I have made his, his mountain a desolation and given his inheritance to the jackals of the wilderness. So, makita natin dito. Meron silang discourse dito. Ang mga Israelita, sabi niya, I have loved you, says the Lord. Pero tinanong sila. Ang sabi, paano mong sabing mahal mo kami? Diba? Ito yung mga tao na ayaw gumalang sa Diyos. Next, let be. They dishonor God by not giving proper respect a son should give to the father. Malakay 1.6 A son honors his father and a servant his master. Then if I am a father, where is my honor? Sabi ng Diyos. 
And if I am a master, where is my respect? Says the Lord of armies to you, the priests who despise my name. Who are the priests who despise the name of God? Those people who doesn't honor God as their father. Kaya tinahanap ng Diyos yun, mga kapatid. So, they, they dishonor God by not giving proper respect a son should give to his father. Nakakalungkot to. Maraming mga anak ayaw ng rumispeto sa kanilang mga tatay. Sa panahon natin ngayon. Nalulungkot ako eh. May mga naririnig ako, tinatawag na lang sa pangalan yung kanilang tatay. No? So, let us see. They dishonor God with the way they serve God and the temple. They dishonor God with the way they serve God and the temple. Ano bang klaseng paglilingkod nila sa Diyos sa templo? Malakay 1, verse 6c to 8. But you say, how have we despised your name? You are presenting defiled food upon my altar. But you say, how have we defiled you? In that, you say, the table of the Lord is to be despised. And when you are you present the blind animal for sacrifice, is it not evil? Or even you present a lame or sick animal, is it not evil? So, offer it to your governor. Would he be pleased with you? Or would he receive you kindly, says the Lord of armies. So, makita natin dito. Nilalapastangan nila ang Diyos sa pamamaraan ng kanilang paglilingkod sa templo. Paano yun? Nag-o-offer sila sa Diyos ng mga defiled things, yung mga ayaw ng Diyos. Yung marurumi. Ayaw ng Diyos. Yung hindi dapat ialay sa Diyos, inialay nila sa Diyos. Letter D. They dishonor God by breaking the covenant of marriage. They dishonor God by breaking the covenant of marriage. Wow! Grabe. Malachi chapter 2 verse 13 to 16 says, Another thing you do, you flood the Lord's altar with tears. You weep and wail because He no longer pays attention to your offerings or accepts them with pleasure from your hands. You ask, why? It is because the Lord is acting as the witness between you and the wife of your youth because you have broken faith with her. Though she is your partner, the wife of your marriage covenant, has not the Lord made them one? In flesh and spirit they are His. And why one? Because He was seeking godly offspring. So guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith with the wife of your youth. I hate divorce, says the Lord God of Israel. And I hate a man's covering himself with violence as well as with his garment says the Lord Almighty. So, guard yourself in your spirit and do not break faith. So, makita natin dito, naalala ko tuloy yung kuwinento ni Dr. Jonathan David na pumunta sila, naimbitahan sila sa isang church sa ibang, ibang uh, bansa. Ano ho? Pagdating nila doon, ay pinakilala ng pastor yung kanyang asawa at yung kanilang mga anak. So, ang pakilala ng pastor na ito ay anak ng misis ko. Yung ibang mga bata. Yung pala ay divorciado yung pastor at nag sa iba. Kakalungkot, di ba? Sa so, gulat gulat si pastor Jonathan David doon. Kakalungkot, di ba? Meron din ako kilala dito sa Pilipinas na ganyan. Nangyari. Hindi lang isa. So, they dishonor God by breaking the covenant of marriage. First Peter 3.7 You husband in the same way, live with your wives in an understanding way as with someone weaker since she is a woman and show her honor as a fellow heir of the grace of life so that your prayer will not be hindered. Yan, yan ang maganda. 
Itreat natin ang ating asawa as a weaker vessel. Hindi po pwedeng madunggil. Bakit? Kasi baka magkalama. Iingatan natin sila. Dapat. Upang sa gayon, ano sabi yan? And show her honor as a fellow heirs of the grace of life. Pakitaan natin sila ng paggalang bilang kasama nating tagapagmana sa grasya ng buhay. Ano pa? Upang sa gayon ng ating mga prayers ay hindi ito mahadlangan kundi papakinggan ng Diyos. Letter E. They dishonor God by robbing Him with their tithes and offering. Ayan na naman. Palasak na to eh. But still, there are so many pastors There are so many workers, leaders, ano, na kung saan ay hindi naman nagbibigay ng tithes. Pag nagbigay ng tithes, hindi na mag-offering. Pag nag-offering, hindi na magbibigay ng tithes. <laughs> Kahit pala sakto, kailangan nating malaman at maintindihan mabuti. Malakay chapter 3 verse 7 to 10 says, From the days of your father, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. See? Simula-simula pa. Ang sabi niya, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept them. Return to me and I will return to you, says the Lord of hosts. But you say, how shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you are robbing me. But you say, how have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings, you are cursed with a curse for you are robbing me the whole nation of you, bring the whole tithe into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing until it, until it overflows. So makita natin dito, hinahamon tayo ng Diyos na bumalik sa Kanya. Bakit tayo babalik sa Kanya? Sapagat sinasalangsang natin ang Diyos. Ang ibig sabihin na bumalik kasi ang tao hindi nagbibigay ng kanyang offering at saka ng kanyang tithes ay tao na lumayo sa Diyos. Backslider. Kahit nasa loob ka ng church, kahit ikaw ay pastor, kahit ikaw ay musician, worker, elder sa church, kung hindi mo ginagawa ang pinapagawa ng Diyos, backslider ka, kapatid. Kaya sabi ni Lord, return to me. At sa ating pagbabalik sa Panginoon, ano sabi? Bring. Bring. Dalhin natin. Ha? Ano ang dadalhin natin? The whole tithe in the storehouse. Ano pa? Anong ninanakaw natin? Offering. Kakalungkot, di ba? Masakit, pero yan ang totoo. Kung ginagawa natin ito, magsisi na tayo, mga kapatid. Gawin na natin yung pinapagawa ng Diyos. Manumbalik ka na sa Diyos. Bakit tayo pinababalik ng Diyos? Kung hinohord mo ang tights mo at saka ng offering mo, you are a backslider. Why? Eh, sabi ng Diyos eh, bumalik ka sa akin. Return to me. Bakit? Kasi sa una pa lang, sabi niya, for the days of your fathers, you have turned aside from my statutes and have not kept it. Diba? Kinalimutan yung pinapagawa ng Diyos. Proverbs 3, 9 to 10. Honor the Lord your, from your wealth and from the first of your produce. So your barns, barns, will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Ang sabi? Honor the Lord. Sa ano paraan? From your wealth and from the first of your produce. See? Mga unang bunga. Pag nagtanim ka, yung mga unang ani mo, ibibigay mo yun kay Lord. Ano pa? Yung wealth mo, gamitin mo yun para sa ating Panginoon Diyos. Yung kayamanan mo. Iniutos yan ng Diyos. Kaya sa honor the Lord. From your wealth and from the first of all your produce. See? Now, The biggest takeaway is this. God wants to be the sole proprietor of your heart. 
He makes it clear when it says, No one can serve two master. Even you will hate, either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Matthew chapter 6 verse 24. So, here we can see that God wants to be the sole proprietor of your heart. Siya lang ang magmamay-ari sa puso mo. Very clear na sinasabi niya dito, you cannot serve both God and money. Matthew 6, Matthew 6, 24. Ano pa? God commands us not to have any other gods before Him. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2 to 3 says, I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. See? Inilabas ng Diyos sa mga Israelita from the slavery of Pharaoh. Bakit inilabas sila? Because God wants them to honor Him and worship Him. Kaya sabi niya, You shall have no other gods before me. Sa ating kapanahunan, ililalabas tayo ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo mula sa pagkaalipin ni Satanas. Bakit tayo nilabas? Upang sa gayon makita natin na ang Diyos lamang ang ating paglilingkuran. Na wala tayong ibang gagawing Diyos liban sa Kanya. But it's sad to say there are so many Christians na pinapalitan nila ang Diyos sa Kanyang dapat kalagyan, sa Kanyang pwesto. Pastor, paano ba ito pinapalitan? Anything na pinalit mo sa pwesto ng Diyos, yun ay just Diyosan. Halimbawa, araw ng linggo. Dahil wala namang gathering sa mga churches, karamihan dito sa Metro Manila, sa mga probinsya, meron silang mga gathering sa mga churches. Eh. Araw ng linggo, manonood ka ng live stream, pero nasaan ka? Oh, sino ngayon ang mas inuna mo? Yung paglilingkod mo sa Diyos at pag-attend mo, panonood mo ng live stream, na preaching ng pastor mo, o nadudun ka sa ibang lugar, nag happy happy Yun ang Diyos mo. ba? So God has commanded us not to have any other gods before Him. Inuna mo pa yun kaysa Diyos. So pinagpalit mo yun. Kaya yung ipinalit mo, yun ang Diyos mo. Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Bang klase with all. Saan natin makikita? Mark chapter 12 verse 30 apat na beses na sinabi with all. Pag inuulit-ulit yun ibig sabihin nun idinidiin niya yun na walang dapat iba, kundi siya lang. Amen? With all. With all eh. Ulitin ko, love the Lord your God with all your heart. And with all your soul. And with all your mind. And with all your strength. Ang ibig sabihin nito, buong pagkatao mo. Yun ang gusto ng Diyos. Mahalin mo siya ng buo mong pagkatao. Pag sinabing buong pagkatao, kasama bang yung ari-arian, kayamanan, mga mahal sa buhay? Yes, of course! Ang lahat ng bagay na yon, number two yon, Number one si Jesus. Kaya nga sabi ko sa asawa ko, Sweetheart, I love you. And you are my number two. Lumot wanto asawa ko. Why? Because Jesus is my number one. 
Hindi ko pwedeng ipalit ang aking asawa kay Jesus. At hindi ko rin pwedeng ipalit si Jesus sa asawa ko. Diba? Jesus is the supreme or sovereign in all that I have. So, Jesus said that the greatest commandment is to love Him or love the Lord. That is the greatest commandment. Ano pa? God wants to be the Lord of your life. Not just with your words, but also with your action. Matthew 7, 21 says that everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord will enter the kingdom of heaven, but the one who does the will of my Father, who is in heaven, will enter. So even though doon ka tumira sa loob ng church, kahit gawin mo ang lahat ng mga gawain sa church, kahit maging busy ka sa church, hindi lang busy, kundi visible ka sa church, kahit lahat na, sa'yo na. Pero, kung hindi mo ginagawa ang kalooban ng Diyos, ano sabi nila, depart from me, you who works in equity. Dapat si Jesus lang ang Lord of your life. Hindi lang sa pamamagitan ng salita mo, kundi dahil sa iyong mga gawa. Ano pa? He wants you to curb, to carve out time for Him and commit your best to Him. Colossians 3. 23 to 24 says, Whatever you do, ano man ang gagawin mo? Do your work heartily. Ask for the Lord and not for people. Knowing that it is from the Lord that you will receive the reward of the inheritance. It is the Lord Christ whom you serve. See? Whatever we do, do it all heartily as we are doing to the Lord. Bakit? Sapagkat, si Lord lang naman dapat talaga ang ating isiserve paglilingkuran. Kung ikaw ay namamasukan sa kumpanya, gawin mo na merong pagmamahal ang ginagawa mo sa kumpanya bilang paglilingkod mo sa Diyos. Kung ikaw ay may-ari ng negosyo, Palaguin mo ang negosyo mo nang mayroong pagmamahal na nagmumula sa puso mo na katulad ng pagsiserve mo sa ating Diyos. Everything we do, do it heartily as we are doing for Christ. ba? It is the Lord Christ whom we are served. We are serving. Next, we are not our own. We are God's property. Oh, sabi mo sarili mo, hindi pala ako to, hindi akin tong katawan na to, hindi akin tong buhay na to. Pag-aari ako ng Diyos. 1 Corinthians 6, 19-20 Do you not know that your bodies are temple of the Holy Spirit? Ulitin ko. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you when you have received from God. You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Honor God with your bodies. So makita natin dito mga kapatid na ang ating physical na katawan ay templo ng ating Panginoong Diyos. Templo ng banal na Espiritu. Hindi natin pag-aari ito. Ano sabi? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Binili na tayo ng ating Panginoon. Ang tanong, kapag ikaw ba'y bumili ng isang bagay sa, sa department store, Binayaran mo ng tamang pagbabayad at inuwi mo sa bahay, may habol pa ba ang dating may-ari doon sa binili mo? Yung may-ari ng department store? Meron pa ba siyang karapatan doon sa binili mo? Wala na. ba? 
Sino ngayon ang may karapatan doon sa binili mo? Di ba ikaw? May karapatan kang gawin ang lahat ng gusto mo doon sa binili mo. Halimbawa, bumili ka ng napakagandang damit. At pagkatapos, iduwi mo sa bahay mo. May karapatan pa ba doon sa binilhan mo yung damit? Yung, sa damit? Wala na, di ba? Ikaw na ang may karapatan. Ikaw na ang may kapangyarihan. Pwede mong gupitin yun, di ba? Aangal pa ba yung binilhan mo? Hindi na. Amen? Aangal ba yung damit dahil ginupit mo? Hindi. Bakit? Kasi ikaw ang may-ari. Ikaw na ang may authority doon sa binili mo. Kung ipamigay mo sa iba. Di ba? Kaya mong gawin yun. Bakit? Kasi nga, ikaw may-ari. Ganon din sa Diyos. Binili niya tayo. Kaya kung ano ang gusto ng Diyos para sa atin, dapat yun ang sundin natin. Why? Because we are precious in His Son. Tayo ay binili ng Diyos upang sa kayo manahan ng Kanyang Espiritu sa atin. Kaya dapat luwalhatiin natin ang Diyos sa pamamagitan ng ating mga katawan. Okay po ba yun? Amen. Amen. Dapat lamang po. Kaya't mga kapatid, luwalhatiin ng Diyos. Luwalhatiin ng Diyos sapagkat hindi atin ang ating katawan, tayo ay pag-aari ng Diyos. In conclusion, in conclusion, sabi sa Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13 to 14, Now, What should we learn from everything that is written in this book? The most important thing a person can do is to respect God and obey His command. Because He knows about everything people do, even the secret things. He knows about all the good and all the bad, and He will judge people for everything they do. Uulitin ko, Ecclesiastes chapter 12. 13 says, Now, what should we learn from everything that is written in this book? The most important thing a person can do is to respect God and obey His command. Because He knows about everything people do, even the secret things. He knows about all the good and all the bad and He will judge people for everything they do. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 to 14. Makikita natin to. Easy to read. By, uh, easy to read. ERV. Easy to read version. Napaganda, di ba? Ang pinakaimportanteng bagay sa isang tao na magagawa niya ay irespeto ang Diyos at sumunod sa lahat ng kanyang pinag-uutos. Kapatid, honor God. Why? Because God deserves honor. Amen. Father God, we thank you and we respect you We honor you. We worship you. Hayaan mo po, Panginoon, na kami ay katulad ng 24 elders casting all their crowns before you in heaven realms. Here on earth, O God, teach us to obey you. Teach us to honor you because you have bought us with a price. We thank you so much Patuloy na ikaw ang siyang manguna sa lahat po ng nanonood ng live stream nito. Na patuloy ang pagbabago ay dumating sa bawat buhay ng bawat isa. Pabigyan ka namin ang kalwalatian sa lahat-lahat ng aming ginagawa. We give you all the glory and we give you all the praises in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Magdang araw po sa inyong lahat. Were you blessed with the message today? If 
also please like, subscribe and hit the bell button below for updates. Thank you for watching and see you next streaming.